What's up guys? Uh, welcome back to the channel. If you're a subscriber, I definitely want to thank you. I really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. This is going to be a little bit of a different type of video than the ones I normally show. Um, but on this channel, I'm really trying to just provide you guys with some information. And this is going to be more towards guys that are uh, want to be self-employed or start a business if you've already started one. Um, this is going to be some information that'll probably help you out. Like I'm 42 now and I've spent probably uh, half of my working adult life working for myself versus being an employee, a W-2 employee. There's some pros and cons to both and right now I'm actually doing both. But what I wanna go over are the four types of customers you're gonna run into and you know, you'll identify these customers, you'll know what the, what's going on and if you're already in a business, uh, you're gonna you're probably gonna laugh at some of this, and probably agree with it, um, because like I said, I've I've done for years, and most customers you're gonna are gonna fall into these four categories, four types of customers. If not one customer, it can be multiple uh, of these categories. Um, if you know this when you're first starting out, if you're new or about to start. You watch this video and you hear what I'm explaining here. And hopefully, if you guys are in, a, in you know, self-employed, leave some comments, share some of your experiences, also down in the comments. All right. Now, this will save you if you can ident identify this and know how to deal with these types of customers. It will save you some time, but most importantly, it's going to save you some time and money because when you're working for yourself, time is money. All right. So let's get started here. The first type of customer that I'm gonna mention on this is the dangle the carrot customer. Now, what do I mean by that? They're the customer that comes in and they say, I'm gonna give you a lot of work. I'm gonna give you tons of work. And they, they dangle that carrot like, oh, you know, just do this for me. They're gonna kinda, of, these are, they're gonna ask for favors. They're gonna to try to pretend you're, y'all are gonna be partners in some way. They're going to exclusively use you, and this is because they kind of think that you're smaller than they are, all right? Um, and it's, it, it's, they, they'll waste your time. They're going to, you know, they'll change details. They'll show up late. You know, if, you've, if you're if you like, hey, I'm going to meet you here, or they're going to come here, you set up time, they show late. They show no respect for your time, and um they're, they're, they over-promise and under-deliver. They're going to say, hey, I'm going to order 300 of these, and then, but, and they want that discount for 300 of your product, but they only want to buy five or 10, okay? Um, they're usually full of it, and they're usually broke. Um, you're going to see that a lot. And, you know, they think that they are your only customer, and they think that, um, they think that they are your biggest and most important customer, or at least they're going to act like that, you know, and they're going to want, they're trying to get you to think that that's the case. All right. So be aware of that. Um, how to handle that customer. Don't buy into their BS. Okay. Let them know you are busy with other customers, you know, and do, you can do this politely and professionally. Hey, I'm busy with other customers and my time costs money, you know, and just be straight up, brutally honest with them. Um, like I'll give you a story like I used to build like I'm a welder and fabricator and most of this information is going to be kind of more towards the trades type of work. Um, you know, I did uh, custom fabrication, welding and stuff like that. And I built a lot of products for customers or businesses and things of that nature. Well, it got to where I was doing a lot of security cages. OK, so this one guy comes in, you know, security cages for air conditioners. Now, um, uh, it was in, you know, a bad uh, city, high crime area, and they were still air conditioners like crazy back in like 20, gosh, I think it was 2010 on up through 2017. Um, air conditioner theft was a really big thing, and I was building five, 600 of those things a year. And I had a customer come in, and he's acting all uh, like, oh, I'm going to, I need 300 of these. Like, right, you know, I'm, I'm going to buy 300. I'm, you know, he acts like he's granddaddy Warbucks or whatever. And he's plopped down a hundred dollar bill on the welding table. I'm buying all you guys lunch, da, 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 you know, dangling that carrot. You know, I'm going to, y'all are going to be rich after dealing with me. I'm the big shot. 
And no one already being seasoned into it, knowing what this was, I was like, okay, what are you willing to write me a check for now? Because he said he was asking for a discount. He was wanting to buy 10 or 20 cages, but at the discount as if he's buying 300. So when I asked him, okay, what are you willing to stroke me a deposit check for right now? Oh, uh, well, really, I only need, well, I'm going to buy 300. So, and I'm like, well, if you're willing to, let's do a deal, a contract on 300, and you write me a deposit check for 300, and guarantee me that, you know, we're going to set some terms where you're going to buy 300 over this. Okay, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Or let's, you know, if you're only going to buy 10, that's the discount I'll give you on 10, okay, which isn't much. So just recognize that. That's how you deal with those. All right, so that was the first type of customer. The next type is, and this is a very common, the slow pay customers, okay? You do, you do the, you, you know, let's say you got a uh, job. Uh, this, this, is, this is how they're going to act, all right? So they will answer the phone if you need, if they know that, that, they don't owe you any money at the moment and what you're either the service or product that you're providing hasn't been completed yet and you call them, they're going to answer the phone right away. Yeah, 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 man. What do you need? What do you need? And, you know, because you're calling for some details or something or whatever, they answer the phone within seconds. The very moment they know that that product or service is complete, they fall off the face of the earth. Okay. And one of the most common excuses is, oh, I went on vacation. I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm at the airport. I'm going on vacation, man. I'll be back in two weeks. And you're like, going on vacation? What? You know, you'll never see so many people going on vacation, right? You know, completely never mention this. They know you're about to be done with it on a Thursday. And then they're claiming that they're leaving on vacation. You know, I, I, I can't tell if I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody say, oh, man, I just left on vacation. The next common excuse is phone issues. Oh, my phone broke. This guy, uh, you know, phone, you know, lost it. You know, phone broke. They're going to avoid you. I mean, once they know that, that you owe them some money and it's time for them to pay up, they are they they disappear. They disappear. And then they're going to act like they're doing you a favor by paying you. When they, you do finally get them on the phone, they're going to act annoyed. Like, oh, it's you. You need your money. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, can you just call me later? Whatever. Now, this time, of, this day and age, like when I first started, you know, debit cards and, you know, and all that stuff, you know, you weren't taking stuff over the phone like as much as like now. It's like you're selling people. I mean, it's so easy to pay people now. So there's not so much room for excuses, but... You know, when it was mostly cash or check at the time, or you'd have, you know, you might have a, um, you know, credit card. You could probably take it over the phone, and then you'd have these fees and all that mess. But they will avoid you like the plague when it comes time to pay up. All right. Now, talking about slow pay customers, I'm just going to go ahead and mention this too. Big companies, big companies are the hardest to get paid from, and I know that probably you're thinking, oh man. You know, when you're young and, or new to the business or working for yourself and you get a job with a big company, you get, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, you're, you're thinking to yourself, oh, man, I'm good. They're going to start using me. I'm going to be, you know, this and that. And this, this is what they're going to say. We're net 30. We're net 60. We're net 90. Now, what that means is they want you to complete the job. They want you to invest your time and your materials and all the stuff. And then after it's done, you send them a, a bill an invoice and in 30 days they're going to pay you okay that's what they mean by net 30 or 60 days or net, they'll say they'll call up and i guarantee you it's going to be um some woman or, or whatever from a big company you know big she, you know um big company she's going to call you and she's going to talk it over and she's going to be like hey um yeah we, we we're net 30 we, we want you probably we're net 30 and you're going to say, um, okay, you're going to be, you know, I want, I, want the, I, want to, I want to do the work for this company. Guess what's going to happen in 30 days after you do it? You're broke at this point because you've, you've wasted your time. You haven't been getting paid for the two weeks that you did, did this big job for them. 
and you've invested your, you know, you, you've run up some stuff on your credit card and all this other mess, and you've done all this time, you haven't gotten paid, you know, you're hungry, you got empty gas tank and all that. In 30 days, guess what's going to happen? You're going to hear crickets. You're going to hear crickets. Nothing. Nothing's going to happen. And then you're going to call them, and then again, they're going to act like they're doing you a favor to pay. Oh, well, I guess we could send you a check. Uh, yeah, whatever, you know. They're hard to get paid from, okay? Here's how you deal with that. You gotta realize you set your payment terms, no one else, okay? And you need to do that up front um, and take deposits on certain things. Like if I were to build something that, like if I'm building something that I can sell to pretty much a bunch of other people, I didn't really require a deposit. But when I was custom making something for like somebody's specific house or whatever, yeah, I'm taking a deposit because what's going to, if you don't take that deposit, they can just be like, oh, I don't want it now. And then there you've already you spent a week work doing this project for them and you got, um, you know, you can just, nothing you can do really. I mean, they can just say, oh, I don't want it anymore. I can't afford it anymore. I don't want it, this and that. And, you know, you can't get your time back. You can't, you've already, now you've built a product that you can't sell to anyone else. And if you don't take that deposit, you're kind of screwed. But if you if you do take that deposit, let's say it costs them two thousand dollars, and you've taken a thousand dollars, okay, um, they're gonna they're more likely gonna say, okay, I'll, let me go ahead and just give you the thousand dollars because they don't want to give you, you know, whether it be eight hundred or a thousand dollars and get nothing because if they because they cancel, you're not gonna you know. Um, so they're most likely going to go ahead and just stay with it. And if they're not willing to give you a deposit, I wouldn't do business. If it's something like that, I mean, who cares? Go ahead. And, there's plenty of plenty of customers out there. You got to have an abundance mindset when you're working for yourself. Plenty of customers out there. There's plenty of work to do. Um, if you're having problems getting the work, you just got to figure out how to you know better ways to get to the work or get get work done. And with these big companies that say I'm net thirty, I'm net sixty, whatever. Um, I, you know what I tell them? I don't care what you are. I'm net now. I'm net now. If you want me to do it for you, for your company, I'm net now. I set my payment terms. Imagine if you were to go into Lowe's or Home Depot and load up your basket full of tools and supplies and you go up to the checkout counter and you tell the person, hey, I'm net, I'm net 30. Um, so, yeah, I'll pay you in 30 days. And you start walking on out. Guess what's going to happen? Uh, Security is going to come, police are going to come, and, uh, you know, it doesn't work that way, okay? So why are you going to let some big company, why are big companies going to go to a smaller guy and, and expect them to invest their time and material, have their time and material? Basically, you're being the little bank for them. You know, you're, you're you know, basically giving them a loan on your time and material, and they're just, you know, and they're so big, they don't care. Like, they will not care, even if... They know if you were to try to take them to court for it, they, you don't have enough money. And they do, you know. So anytime, and I'll give you a funny story on this. I'm going to give you guys a story probably for each one of these. Um, I had, it was about a $9,000 machine I was selling. And uh, this company calls, a big well-known company. They call and they say, um, yeah, we're net 30. I started laughing on the phone. I said, I don't care what you are. I'm not, I'm not going to put my $9,000 machine on a truck and have it shipped over you over in Texas and then hope that you're going to pay me in 30 days. All right. I said, I was so busy at the time. I had so many customers. I go, what's going to happen is you're going to send, when you send me a check for the full amount plus the shipping. Okay. Cause at the time I was so busy, I, I, I wouldn't even have taken deposits. You had to get the full amount. And because these machines would take me at least a week to build, and I had a whole board on my on my wall, and so I said, when you send me the full amount uh, for the for the machine that you want, plus the shipping, I've sent them an invoice. They knew what the full amount was. I said, I'm gonna take this sharpie marker that I have in my hand. I'm gonna go over here to my board, and I'm gonna write you down in the next available slot. And right now, that slot, you're probably looking at about two months. I'm going to start on your machine, and about two weeks later, you're going to get it. So that's how the phone conversation ended and got off the phone and thought I'd never hear from these people again. You know, if I, I'm not going to say their name, but you would know them right away. It's a household name. The next morning, FedEx 
drops off an envelope and I'm like, what the heck is this? And I'm opening it up and I'm looking at the check. I'm like, what the heck is this for? And I was like, oh, it's the, I just got off the phone with them. They overnighted the check. The company that was like, oh, we're net 30. We can't, uh, 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 or I think it wasn't even net 30. It was like net 90 or something. Ridiculous. They overnighted the check. So you got to realize when they say they're net 30, they're asking you to be net 30. Now, when they just say, oh, we're net 30, mm, you're going to submit to our payment terms. That's when it rubs me the wrong way. Now, if they were to say, hey, may we pay you in 30 days? That's a, you know, if they say it like that, that's a different story. Um, but, you know, you can say, then just make it up if, if you want to risk it or not. But I don't really like to do that. All right. So first we talked about the dangle the carrot customer, then the slow pay customers. Now we're going to talk about the manipulating customer. And again, one customer can be all these all at the same time. All right. So what the manipulating customer says, let's say that, um, like, for example, I'm, I'm a welder and fabricator and uh, that was my business. I still do that now. And I'm also a, a mechanic at a, a John Deere dealership as my W-2 job. But and I'll deal with this in both worlds, really, honestly, manipulating customers. You're the best. You're the hey, they'll come up. Hey, Troy, you are the best. Uh, welder fabricator, this job won't take you any time. It's not going to take you. It's going to be so easy for you. And it's, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, they, they you know, they, they're kind of acting like, oh, yeah, I, 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 you're just so great. You're so great. This won't be easy. This is a manipulation tactic to get their bill lower. Because what's going to happen is they may have already gone around. They know they've, they've heard, uh, you know, other people say, oh, it's going to take four days to do this or three days or whatever. And they go say, oh, man, it probably only take you two days, maybe one. I mean, you know, one day, maybe two Um because you're just so good. You're the best. You're the best. I need you. And they're, they're stoking you up and all that. And so that way, when it takes you four days to get it done, they're, they're like, what? It took you four days? What? what? And you want to charge me for this? How? Oh, my goodness. So just recognize that's a manipulation tactic when they're sitting there, you know, stoking your ego up, um, you know, talking about how great you are and all this and that. And you might be. But when they're talking about, it's only going to take you, this is going to be an easy job for you. Now, look, if you are really good, you know, you know, quality, it, that price is still, you know, I, it doesn't matter how long it takes me. I, when you're working for yourself, you're not working on an hourly basis. You're working on getting it done. Um, you know, you, you set, you got the product or service and you got the price. Okay. So once it's done, it doesn't matter. People would often call and say, hey, do you charge you know, by how hard it is or, you know, by the time or whatever. And you're like, look, I give you a set price on this. It, it, you know, whether it takes me two hours or 20 days, this is what you're going to pay. And that's, that resolves a lot of issues. All right. So, um, how to handle that customer, just recognize what they're doing and just be honest. Like if you think it's, I, and I was always the type where if I thought something was going to take me 10 hours, mistakes happen, things like this. It's always something. Um, just keep, don't, don't change your price. Just recognize how you deal with these manipulating customers. Just recognize what they're doing. You don't have to call them out for it. You can just say, Hey, I appreciate it. Um, here's my price and just know, be realistic about how long it's going to take you to get it done. Um, and then finally, and this is a very common thing the in a rush customer, they come in, Oh my gosh. And you go, how, I hate hearing this. They, you say, okay, well, when are you needing to get this done? Oh, I needed it done yesterday. Uh, and you're thinking, don't, if, look, don't say that to people, contractors and, and or mechanics or whatever. You're just going to annoy them. Um, you know, I needed this done yesterday and that, you know, what, what do you want me to do? Go back in time. Okay. If you need, if you want me to rush it, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Okay. And you got to rec recognize how you deal with these people. Um, you got to recognize that their failure to plan isn't your emergency. And you got to let them know, say, look, you know, hey, it is what it is. Already got other customers ahead of you. Um, you know, if you want me to there, you know, I, I remember a guy asked me, he said, is there a price where I can get it done 
tomorrow? I said, man, there's a price you can get it done tonight. Yeah, there is a price. And the way I said it, he realized, yeah, I guess I'll just wait. Um, yeah, because he knows, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it tonight after I take care of my regular customers, and I'll give you a special rate. I'll come do that thing tonight. And, but, you know, have that money ready. Um, so those are the four types of customers. Just recognize you're going to hear, and I know guys leave some comments in the uh, below if you're, you know, self-employed or in the trades and everything. I know you've related to some of this. It's very common. You know, when you find that perfect customer, which, you know, is so rare, I'd say one out of a hundred that they appreciate, they respect your time. They appreciate your product or your service. They pay on time. And, um, the, those are the guys that I put ahead or I do, I'll go the extra mile. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up. If it, this will save you a lot of uh, grief, if you recognize these things and just deal with it right off the bat. And like I said, have an abundance mindset. There's plenty of work out there. There's plenty of customers and don't try to be the cheapest guy. Try to be the best. You know, that's what I can recommend. Don't ever try to like, um, if you ever have a customer, like one, I'll give you one more story here real quick. Um, one time I was doing something for a customer. One, he showed up, he shows up late and he's acting like, uh, then, then he wants to talk about the price. Uh, you know, well, then he wants me to give him a price on doing something else. And I'm like, Hey, I'm not really interested in doing that. And he's sitting here basically begging me to give him a price. So I give him a price on, it was a window security bars for his entire house. So I figure it up while I'm still waiting for him to show up to pay me. And so gets there, um, you know, pays me for the security cage that I put on his air conditioner. And then he's acting about, he's, I give him the price for the window bars. And he says, uh, oh, I'm gonna need, a, I'm gonna need an explanation. And I go, what are, you, what are you talking about? Oh, well, I know a guy that'll do it. I said, stop right there. I don't wanna hear it. What someone else will charge for it has nothing to do with me. Okay. I don't care if you got someone else that'll do it cheaper and you, then go use him, go use him. There's a reason you don't want to use him. Okay. And it's not because he's the cheapest. It's probably because he does shoddy work. You want my high quality work at that. And you're wanting me to do it cheaper. It doesn't work that way. Okay. And so, and I told him also, I said, if you want this, me to do it also, that's the price it's going to be. And that's about two months from now because I've got a schedule I got to keep and I'm, I'm not don't ever act desperate for the business because if, if they know you're desperate especially if you're new starting out they're going to take advantage of you they're going to take advantage of you so anyway hope you found this video helpful uh, hit that like button if you haven't already hit that subscribe button I'm going to do a lot of more videos like this coming soon we go over a lot of these little things that'll help you guys out and have some funny stories for you but um, I'll see you guys next time have a good day